So this is my next instalment of my afternoon tea playlist. I've also included a review of what I thought of the Harrods afternoon tea at the end. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So today's video, I'm having the Harrods afternoon tea. Um, it's a little bit busy, so I'm trying to be fairly discreet, um, but I've got my mic on, so hopefully you guys can hear me a bit better. Um, but yeah, so I've just got out the Amouge Bouche, which just looking at the classic afternoon tea, so it's £65 per person, but they do like vegan ones um, and different kind of dietary requirements. And the Amouge Bouche, which is just here, is cucumber, avocado, gazpacho with a parmesan crisp. I'm not a big fan of cucumber, as you guys might know. Um, so we'll see how we go, but I'm sure it'll be refreshing though. Mm -hmm. Not, not. I mean, it's refreshing, but um, not quite loving it. Mm, the parmesan crisp's really nice. A nice kind of bite to it with the carpaccio. But um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the cucumber. Okay, so we have cucumber with cream cheese on tomato bread, salmon volivant with orange mousse and fennel, egg with black truffle and asparagus, and a chicken and tarragon croquette. And just in the front is a parmesan madeleine with sour cream and caviar. Brilliant. You then have a chocolate delice with passion fruit, lime timut and coconut sponge, strawberry and raspberry yuzu, and an egg pot and almond tart. Brilliant. Okay. Enjoy. Great. Thanks a lot. Right, so I am going to start with, I think, the sliced cucumber and lemon and mint cream cheese, which is this one. Again, I'm not a huge fan of cucumber, but, um, but we'll see. Give it a go. Mm. I think it's a smoked paprika and like tomato bread. It's not too bad, but again, I'm not a massive fan of cucumber. And I don't think it's a bottomless afternoon tea here, because I've only given you individual um, little mini like sandwiches and volivons and things. But I'm not quite sure, so we'll see what they say uh, later on. But yeah, I wouldn't necessarily rush to get the cucumber sandwich, just because I'm not, I'm just not a big fan, but you guys might love it. Let's go with the next one. This is the Madeleine, just here. Can I see that? Oh, and this, let me just check on the menu, is a warm Parmesan Madeleine with sour cream, caviar and chives. Sorry, there's a pianist playing quite loudly. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, but yeah, so it's got a decent amount of caviar um, and parmesan madeleine, which I've never had before. Oh, you can definitely taste the um, parmesan. Mmm. And to be honest, I think that's quite a decent amount of caviar, actually. But you'd kind of expect that for £65. Mmm. Not 
also keen on the sour cream element, but that's because I don't really like sour cream. Hmm. Not too bad. It does seem a little bit dry, but I'm not sure because I don't think I've had a Madeleine before, so I don't know if they're meant to be quite dry. Yeah, not too bad. You can definitely tell it's a Parmesan Madeleine. Ooh. Ooh. It's not too bad. I prefer that to the cucumber sandwich. And then the next one is a Volavon, which is so retro English. Um, I think it was really big in the 70s. It's basically um, a little mini, I think it's puff pastry, um, and it's smoked salmon with fennel, and I think a mousse. I think it's fennel and orange mousse, which I think is quite nice. It's quite a good size. It smells nice. Mm. I like the orange with the smoked salmon. <laughs> I have no idea if you can hear me through the very loud pianist next to me. <laughs> Hopefully the mic is doing something. Yeah, so the fennel and orange mousse is quite yummy actually. I wasn't sure if I'd like it. So the next item is a, I think it's, let me just check, it's a chicken um, and tarragon croquette with a sweet corn cream, which looks nice. It's still nice and warm. I think I'll cut into this. And then that's what it looks like inside with the um, sweet corn cream. amount of chicken to be honest for a chicken croquette hmm. it's mainly full of mashed potato um, but yeah not much tarragon or chicken so we'll try the next the last savory which is looks to be let me just check it is an egg an egg mayo with asparagus brioche and black truffle now again that's quite a decent amount of black truffle i would say um a bit like the caviar which is good sandwich it's okay I've had better egg mayo sandwiches in other afternoon teas which I'll link the playlist in the um, description bar but I like the fact that there's a decent amount of uh, black truffle on there shavings mm. and I love truffle absolutely love black truffle that's a decent amount Right, so the next one I'm going to get is the exotic chocolate delice, delice, I think it is. Oh, it's really, 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 really soft. So that's just the chocolate slice. Super, super soft. And it looks like it's got a compote, passion fruit mousse, and like a chocolate sponge. So if you can kind of see that a bit more closer. And I love chocolate and passion fruit, so I'm probably going to like this. Mm. 
Hmm. Yeah, that's nice. So far, that's the best item on the afternoon tea, I think. But then I'm a bit biased because I love the sweet things. Hmm. Yeah, really nice, really smooth. Hmm. And the chocolate sponge has got like a bit of a brownie vibe to it as well. they did just take away my bottom tray they did ask me if I wanted any more sandwiches so I guess it isn't bottomless otherwise they wouldn't have asked me um, I did prompt them so um, the waiter just said did you want any more of the sandwiches and I said no um, but yeah food for thought if you do come here and you know you're a bit hungry and you want a few more or maybe you've got a favorite one that you want to try out of the savories Oh, brilliant. One with the resin and also flavor as well. Brilliant. We're going to place in the middle of some strawberry jam, some clove cream, some raspberry jam as well. Brilliant. Enjoy. That's great. Thank you. So they've just brought out these scones. So you get one plain and one raisin. So these, oh, they're nice and warm. This is the plain scone. Quite big, actually. Um, I'm not a big fan of the raisin. So maybe doggy bag for my friend later. And then you've got um, two jams. This is the strawberry jam. And I think he said the other was raspberry, I think. And this is the raspberry jam. And then my all-time favorite, a nice big wedge of clotted cream, which I just love. So that's great. A couple of different jams, a decent amount as well. So I am going to have the next patisserie. And this is an apricot tart, if you can see. And it says it's a sweet crust tart baked with frangipan, fresh apricot thyme compote, almond jelly and roasted almonds. So that looks really nice. I'll cut this as well. I'm not a massive fan of apricots, to be honest. But um, I do like frangipan. Okay. I still think I prefer the chocolate size. This is nice and refreshing as well, though. Hmm. It goes quite well after having the chocolate slice because that was quite rich, and this kind of vibe is quite tart. So I'm going to try and pick this up. I have a feeling it's going to collapse on me. It is, it's gorgeous, green, so it's lime and timute, I'm not sure what timute is, let me know if you guys know, and it says it's a lime custard cream with lime timute, pepper jelly and coconut sponge, which looks really cute, and it's cold. Let's try and cut it up. Okay, so when you break inside, you can see just inside there what it looks like. Decent filling. Hmm, that is really lime. Oh my gosh, that packs a punch. I don't know what Timut is, so I can't really comment. But all I can really taste is a really sharp lime dessert, which is nice. It's really sharp, but I really love lime. So that was actually really quite nice. I'll probably have that again actually. But the chocolate slice is still winning. That's still my favourite so far. So one um, patisserie left. Now this is meant to be a strawberry yuzu. I'm not quite sure what yuzu is. Um, oh gosh, I can't pick it up. 
raspberry, so it's meant to be a, a raspberry shoe sponge, which is kind of collapsing on me. A strawberry jelly and a strawberry yuzu whipped um, ganache. But yeah, it has kind of felt a bits though. It's a bit soft. Now I'm not sure if yuzu is alcohol. We'll soon find out. nice but it's like a bit too gelatinous for me I like the strawberry um, flavors though that's really nice and it looks really pretty as well really really pretty okay so I've just checked it's a fruit I didn't know that but um, I like it. Mm. Nice though. I definitely prefer the dessert section more than the savoury, which isn't uncommon for me. Um, I'm not a massive savoury person anyway, but they're nice. bit of a rest and then I'll have one of my scones while they're still warm. So let's try the plain scone or scone however you want to pronounce it. So this is nice and warm it's actually huge if you can kind of like to scale of my head. Um, you do get one of each you get one plain and one raisin but I really don't like raisins so I might take that home and give it to one of my friends. Now, like with most things, I always do the clotted cream first. I love, love, love clotted cream. Oh, you get a decent amount as well, which I'm all about. Yum. And then, do I want strawberry or do I want raspberry? Um, I'll do raspberry, actually. This is the raspberry. You can kind of see it. Now I don't like to put much jam on my scones, or scone, um, it's all about the glotty cream in my opinion, so that's like you know two thirds glotty cream, one third jam. Mm. Oh that's good. Now that's a really nice scone, it's really nice and fluffy inside, not too dense really crisp outside. Mm. Now I recently went to the Ritz in London and these are better scones than the ones at the Ritz in London in my opinion. I'd say in size, taste and texture I prefer these. So I think these scones and the chocolate slice I really like. And the raspberry jam is really nice, it's really tart. Times. Again, loading this um, other half of the scone up with a lot, a lot, a lot of butter cream. So a nice big wedge. You'd think it was butter. Now I think I'm going to go with the raspberry jam again. So I did like that actually. But yeah, not much as you can see. A little, little, little doubling. Yeah, very nice. 
and I think as well you can go downstairs at the Harrods Food Hall and you can buy their scones individually in the food section. So if you didn't want to come and have an afternoon tea and spend £65, you may just want to get a couple of the scones from downstairs. May as well make the most of it. Yummy. Right, I'm gonna carry on eating this now and enjoying the pianist. Mm. Still nice and warm and gooey as well. Best bit of a scone. Hi guys, so I've just got back from London. It was a bit of a mission because there's like strikes on and stuff in London. So that was a bit stressful. Um, but yeah, I didn't really kind of um, end the video uh, at the afternoon tea at Harrods. So I thought I'd do it now and give you a bit of a summary on what I thought. Because I've not done the Harrods afternoon tea before, um, yeah, I don't know, I wasn't, massively impressed I would say so the good things about it is that the desserts are really lovely I particularly like the chocolate slice and the scones are really lovely actually better than the Ritz at London that I went to recently as well uh, but the negatives I would also say the location of where the afternoon tea tea rooms are within the Harrods building it's a massive building it's a bit of a maze but they've kind of put it in like a really odd position. There's no natural light or anything. It's, it's really pretty inside, but it's like, it's kind of like a walkway to other departments uh, within uh, the concessions. So as you're sitting there, you've got like a constant stream of people walking through who aren't actually anything to do with the tea rooms. They're just going to another department of the concession area. So it's kind of weird and it kind of doesn't make it feel as like luxurious um, and that you're kind of just held up in a hallway, in like a walkway, which is weird. If you do go to the afternoon tea, I would suggest going, um, trying to get, if you can request a booth, which is nice. I was only there on my own and they weren't going to give me a booth for like five or six people for obvious reasons. Um, but I would say that if you can try and request a table on the left hand side um, against the far wall and not on the side where it's like the kind of public walkway within the um, Harrods department store because otherwise you're just going to get a constant stream of people walking past you and the staff were lovely the hostess in particular was super sweet and of course you guys will know if you've checked out my channel I do really love Harrods I shop there regularly I love their food um, I'll link below the food Harrods vlog that I've done um, that I did last year just to show you all the kind of like different foods so I'm really interested in the Harrods food that they do but maybe not in the setting of an afternoon tea but um, really appreciate any kind of comments you've got if you've been to the Harrods afternoon tea before this is just my one occasion that I've been so it'd be great to know your thoughts on the room and also the menu that you had at the time as well. It'd be really interesting to know how you thought the food was. Um, but yeah, thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.